You can retweet. Here it is. There you go. Dude. We're live on the hey, interwebs. Look at, look at that. All right. So this is Michael Tardiff, and we're going to talk about the conference. But all week long, we're doing live stream interviews with people who are speaking at Agile 2017, thought leaders in the space, people that help put on the show, and people like Michael, who is a veteran of events like this. You've been to a lot of Agile conferences. You work for Accenture. Solutions IQ, which okay. is a wholly owned subsidiary of Accenture. Yes. Well said. Um, so, we're at the end of the week, right? Did you get the tweet? Did it show up? No, technology doesn't work. Okay, well, so. I did it. Whatever. Um, what have you thought of the conference so far? I haven't gone to much of the conference. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be awesome. Um, <laughs> but, but, I had two choices. Choice one was buy 500 plane tickets and visit everyone I know and love around the world. Okay. Or come to where pay they money all to are. come here and, yeah. and and see people. Okay. And uh, that sounds trivial, but it's not. It's not. I mean, one of the best parts about being here is you get to see everyone and talk to them. It's my own personal conference. Yeah. Because I I've met people I didn't know I was supposed to meet to learn what I didn't know I didn't know. Okay. And I've I've seen people like you who I I know and love and. Uh, I'm learning things again that I didn't know I'd learn. So what's what's one thing out of this week that you picked up that you weren't you didn't know at all before? Like one bright spot of learning. Now well, that you've brought this up, we're going to put you on the spot. As you know, I know everything <laughs> uh, about this much about everything. And okay. I learned a lot more depth about um, something that's a hot topic. Okay. I don't know if you read the news this week, but uh, Collabnet Bought. Oh, I thought we were going to talk about North Korea. Sorry. Bought. Uh, <laughs> I didn't read the news because I, I can't be nice to people <laughs> and read the current news. Okay. Uh, Collabnet bought Leading Agile. Thus no, turned. they did not buy Leading Agile. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I misread the story. <laughs> Collabnet bought version Hell, one. Man. <laughs> and uh, recently, Accenture bought uh, Solutions IQ. And that means that the world's going to hell in a handbasket because well, institutionalization means souls must be ripped out and stacked like cordwood over there. <laughs> So let's, let's talk about this, and I don't want to dig into the different mergers, but do you think that in the Agile space, in your opinion, is that going to continue like this consolidation where the, everybody gets gobbled up? So a brilliant guy named Matthew Carlson right. just happened to do his graduate degree on this very subject. Okay. So anything starts out as, wow, this is new and dangerous. Right. Um, boy, I don't even know if even we should be doing it, never mind anybody else. Right. Then other people say, oh, look what Dave's doing. I'm going to try to do that. And fail or succeed. Right. That's like 20% of, of people. Okay. Um, they are trying to improve something, maybe performance or something else. Um, mostly performance. Okay. And then people say, oh. And then we move from, hey, that could, could improve performance to, is it the right thing? Is it the standard thing? Is it right. the accepted thing? And that whole rest of the 80%, according to Matthew, because I didn't know this until I listened to him, uh, he's speaking this afternoon, if you want to go hear this again. Uh, the rest of it is trying to obtain legitimacy. Because okay. most people don't say, hi, can I do something that might hurt me? Right. Can I do something that probably won't work? Most people say, well, is it safe? Is it the right, sorry, no pun intended. <laughs> Is it the right thing? Jesus. Brilliant name, actually, when you think about it, because when you're looking for legitimacy, you don't say, I wonder if I can lose my company. Right. You say, oh, other people have done this, and it has the stamp of approval. Yeah. As you go up that legitimacy curve and people start saying, oh, yeah, it's what you do. It's the software development life cycle. Right. Uh, some things happen. You have, you have rules and regulations. Then you have norms, the rules and regulations that aren't written down anywhere, but everyone says, oh, yeah. That's the way it goes. Try yeah. wearing a coat and tie here and see how you violated the norms. Um, We've had PMI people show up here before it happens. <laughs> do do they wear coats and ties room now? For them. I, I, I'm, I'm a little <laughs> behind on the news. And then there's, there's um, things that people do, and people say, oh, that's different than the unwritten rules or the real rules. Right. I kind of like that. And that has the potential to start delegitimizing. What previously everyone said, well, this is the way we do it in the law, in medicine, sure. in agile. In agile, yeah. And once that starts happening, if it's something uh, that strikes those first 20%, right. then we start having the down curve. Okay. Two examples. One, a long time ago, right. everyone wore hats. All men wore hats. There were hat racks. There were little things in theaters to put your hat. Yeah. And then and in the pew. Kennedy forgot his hat for the inauguration. 
And suddenly... Is that true? He did. Wow. Well, he actually decided not to wear one because okay. he had beautiful hair. He did. But the point was, every single piece of media at that time, they had like Telegraph and you print stuff on paper. What's that called? <laughs> um, everybody, microfiche? Everybody said, oh my God, this guy is delegitimizing... Uh, the hats. Dr and then suddenly... All the haberdasheries, gone, up in smoke. Now when you wear a hat, you're kind of weird. Or you're trying to re-legitimize hat yeah. as a leading edge person. Same thing with neckties in our business. Okay. I have never worn a necktie to work because I did once. My boss said, what are you trying to prove? Stop that. <laughs> well, he thought I was trying to make a, a statement. Going for a job interview. <laughs> and it was the wrong <laughs> statement to make to, to my boss in yeah. 1980. So... What Matthew helped us uh, see was this is a natural cycle. It's okay. how things work. And it's easy to say if big company buys smaller company because it wants to learn what it doesn't know, that's right. a bad thing. But how else is a big company going to learn what it doesn't know without going into area that is dangerous or unknown to them? Well, so I always, I tend to think of it like um, music. I think about music a lot. So there's indie labels, right? And they get big and popular. Mm -hmm. And then they get bought by... Sony or something like mm -hmm. that. And sometimes they're able to maintain their indie thing and sometimes you get, or, you get the 90s. <laughs> name a record label from Seattle that was known for being kind of that way instead of this way. Well, Sub Pop. Yeah. yeah. So if you go to SeaTac now, yeah. right after the bathrooms and yeah, they got all TSA, that stuff in there. they got a store where you can buy Sub Pop souvenirs. Yeah. And, hey, I visited Sub Pop. Big Disney Eyes Sub Pop. You went to the airport and all you brought me was a Sub Pop t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so what's happened to Sub Pop? They're really on the bleeding edge. Big Kids Sub Pop 3. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right, right. Right, the sequel. Uh, so it's a natural process, not an unnatural process. Okay. And... I'm not and then he healthy. I mean, it's the way it goes. What, what, what's healthy? Maybe not healthy for the people that were at the cutting edge in the beginning, right? Sure. The people that were at the tip of the spear. But for the rest of the world, for everything to grow, for Agile to spread far beyond where it is right now, sure. maybe it's necessary. If Agile is going to spread far beyond where it is now. We said, hey, you know what would be nicer for results and people? Hey, let's treat people like people and have them discover where they're going wrong before it's too late. Frederick Taylor just rolled over in his grave. Uh, Frederick Taylor started that way, <laughs> and then he went into corporations, and they said, oh, so standard work. Oh, no, that was later. Yeah. Um, let's standardize work, and let's take the ones and with brains and make him. them managers, take the ones with muscles and make them workers and right. pr produce metrics. Right. Started great, just like Agile and went in a different way than expected. Right. So if you read early Frederick Taylor, you think, wow, the guy's a visionary. You read later. For all those of you who are sitting at home like trying to decide which Frederick Taylor text to read this morning, you want to go back to the beginning, to the it, roots. You want to go back to the roots. <laughs> and I learned that from a session a, a few years ago. So here's another real-life example, because right. whenever I talk to you, suddenly I get concrete. I don't know what happens. It's a superpower. Um, uh, lakes, pretty, gorgeous, beautiful, right? Yes. Yeah. And then what happens to a lake? Well, things grow in it because sun, and those things fall to the That's bottom. That's why we fill them with chemicals, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the help of this metaphor. Um, <laughs> things fall to the bottom, and sediment builds up, and the lake bottom keeps on rising, and then you start seeing those lily pads, and then there's more lily pads, and, the and gone. then it's a meadow. Right. Oh, beautiful lake. Gone. Right. But but beautiful that's meadow. Literally the natural cycle things because then come trees. Okay. And trees respirate, which causes rain, which creates lakes. So as the meadow is forming, there's another lake growing somewhere else. Right, I'm gonna try to take this and leap back. If, so if we take a hold on, let you. me do my thing. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so glad <laughs> this is live. <laughs> there's another lake forming somewhere else, right? So have you seen anything in the agile space that you're like, oh, Oh, I see where you're going. Well, there's this. a sparkly new thing over there. See, you know how there's visionaries who see what can't be seen because it's too hard to see? Yeah, they come and they sit yeah, in the chair that, that you're in. Now. No, that wouldn't be me. So no, I said Every other later. person Lisa's, sitting here. Lisa's going to be here in a few minutes. Has, so. been, has been a vi Oh, we'll see. An yeah, actual visionary. What I do is say, wow, look at all those ideas. Half of them suck. Oh, wait a minute. That one feels good. Yeah. Can we drag it down to earth and see what we can do with it? So I'm kind of in the middle. It's before the lake is filled in and turned into something else. Okay. And it's definitely before someone said, what's a lake? Right. Oh, we'll pile a lot of water in a hole and see what happens. Um, because of that, I can look at this change and say, oh, that's right, I hate change. But wait a minute, change is a force for, a for, is natural and yeah. a force for change. Mm -hmm. Sorry to be redundant. I really don't like it's being okay. redundant, but I'm often redundant. Um, 
Remember, we're supposed to, remember Kent all those years ago, embrace change? Mm -hmm. Well, it's prickly, it's hard to embrace. Right. Thanks to the person who first said that, who I'm stealing it from. And the changes that we're seeing are the changes that we're going to see. And they're necessary. I don't, necessary sounds like someone's directing Well, necessary them. for to follow. I interviewed uh, Jim Benson one time, and he was talking about how he felt that Lake Kanban needs to basically eventually destroy itself because it has to grow in adoption and become common enough that we have to find something else to fix it or something else to move to afterwards. Or let's imagine this, object-oriented programming. Mm -hmm. um, does anybody consciously do object-oriented programming today? Or is not, it just part of the like water? back in the day. Yeah, because you had who, to switch to it. who wouldn't make clean interfaces between right. different modules? I mean, duh, that's how you do things. Right. Um, our problem right now, in my humble opinion, it is we think this is special. But since when has listening to people and saying, hey, I wonder if we could, been unnatural? I think that a lot of the stuff that came out of some of the people working in factories and that command and control approach, we taught them. I, I mean, I always feel like people get out of school and they're creative and full of ideas and we teach them, you know what, just stop with that fancy thinking. You do that on the weekend. When you come in here, this is how we work. And we talk this to them like they're idiots. Here's how we, we teach things. them not to trust themselves. Yes. And part of what we're all doing is now trying to teach them to trust themselves enough to take chances again. The whole focus on safety is so that it's okay to do something stupid and see what happens because you'll learn from it. Or, or I'm going to be a little bit Marxy here. Um, you remember him? Mustache, good jokes, a yeah. bro brother who yeah. squeaked a horn. Um, yeah. Oh, oh, there's another one. I'm sorry, that's the one I know. Um, so, so you know, there was a. I found an elephant in my pajamas this morning. Sorry, go ahead. I don't know what he was doing there. Um, How he got there, I don't know. Sorry. Could, could we start again? <laughs> go, keep going. So, yeah, because after that, I can remember my train of thought. Karl Marx. Ka a, a, a very, right before Karl. There was no Marx. I was going to get little. Mar I was going to get little Marxy here. <laughs> Um, fast forward, fast forward. Okay, our schools do what they do because yeah. that's how you make people happy or think they're happy in jobs that are inherently unhappy. Okay. If schools didn't train you to do that, we'd all have revolution and burn down all right. the factories. Well, they're also teaching them how to have that eight-hour day so they can go to the factory in, and work In other words, they're yeah. teaching them how to comply instead of originally being the opening of the masses. Schools mm -hmm. help do that. When you take over a country, you take over the education of the masses. Okay. I'm a government major, as you probably know, and I've taken over three countries. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, companies. <laughs> I forgot my job. <laughs> um, and, <laughs> and so it's really necessary to institutionalize and legitimize what we do now in the name yeah. of efficiency to make people think, well, this is the way we do things. It would be dumb to say, let's listen to Dave and actually try his experiments. Right. Right? Until someone says, wow, I'm really bored in school because my brain keeps on working even when I'm not in class. Yeah. I'm going to drop out of school at 15 but keep on learning. Right. And we think, oh, no credentials, dumb guy. Yeah. Well, all the people I know who dropped out of school at 15 are seven times brillianter than me and you together. Now, I don't know if there's not a necessary correlation there, but the kind of person who says, I don't I'm like... learning fast enough. I don't like the norm yeah. are the kind of people who start maybe delegitimizing the norm. And Angel started out as delegitimizing the norm, right. lightweight instead of heavyweight, because we're not building power supplies, we're doing brain work. Right. Learn as you go instead of planning it all. Right. And then people said, well, how can I make money on this? And because people like eating while they're changing the world. Right. And then once we thought of make, making money, we thought, I wonder how we can make more money. And then one person, maybe the founder of my company, yours, said, I wonder how I can make money from them doing this. Oh, well, I can create some standards for them doing it. The spider swallows the fly. And I can sell this. And, and so we just recreated that, that cycle. Yeah. Union's another great, so, a great example. So I think If you wanted another great example. It would be easy to get hung up on if this is happening that maybe it's losing some of its shine. But the thing I keep feeling, like at here, at this conference, like everybody who's at the forefront of this movement, there's a lot of people here that are... It's you know, a big middle of the movement now. The, the, foref well, the we'll forefront but, already marched. But, but there, a lot of those folks are here. They're present. People that worked on that stuff. Oh, the old and guys who learned this keep, in the old days. Know, like, it's easy to be in class. Like, we figured this out 10 years ago, but there's yeah. so... It's such a long tail. There's so many people back there that are still walking... 
I've been in a daily stand-up every day with people that are trying to figure out the first day, where, when did DevOps start? Yeah. Right? And, <laughs> right? Yeah. And that's an important question. When did DevOps enter my consciousness because it had a name that was easy to remember? Yeah. Yeah. So you, you, went, you pointed back there. That's where the world is. Right. That's we what I mean. We think we're in front. Right. But the world is really there. Yeah. And so we're trying to shake up the world because we think the world needs shaking up. It's up to them if the world actually gets shook. Right. And so one of the things that I keep on hearing is, oh, Agile is dead, 20 years with no results. Well, I got a guy who came here. Oh, he's come here four times. He comes here because a long time ago I spent a short while with him right. and then was smart enough to leave and he said, well, crap, I'm going to still do stuff even though Tardif's gone. And seven years later, his company operates according to its rhythm and its customers' needs. I don't want to call that Agile because it ain't. Right. What it is is called a successful organization that serves customers and makes everyone some money. Yeah. Um, so in Mexico, there's a party called the in, <laughs> so in, all over the Institutional map, Revolutionary Party. Okay. So we are so into changing things that we've decided to not change anything. Yeah. Uh, they just lost an election. Okay. For the first time ever in 70 years. Maybe the revolution is going to happen again. The, the same new revolution. The same one that we want. Right. So you don't come here and say, "Oh, well, Agile sucks because it hasn't done anything." Look at what Agile has. But it's done shuck tons, it up and though. done. Well, well, Agile hasn't done a damn thing. People said, "Oh, I don't have to think that way and wear a tie while I'm doing it." Yeah. Let's try this and see what happens. I think it raised. It has raised questions that weren't being asked before that needed to be asked for change to occur. Sure. And every other generation, and our generations are smaller because we're Agile. Um, every generation says, oh, that generation sucks. I'm going to shake them up, damn it. Yeah. And they create their own institutionalized ways of doing things, which then get destroyed by their children. The great thing about now is that those cycles are shorter than they used to be. Yeah. It used to take a, a century to change people significantly. Now people walk to the store and are changed by the time yeah. they come back. Oh, wait, people don't walk to stores. They sit in front of a computer, and the store comes to them. Right. See? Or the Twitter. The Twitter, We're yes, I love the there. Twitter. <laughs> so, do we have like a three more hours before you no, stop me? No, we don't. Lisa's coming. But um, well, I, I want to go listen to so her. So, for the folks that are watching, like, what what would you say if somebody's thinking about coming next year? What are the? They don't know all the people that you know. Like, what are the best reasons to come to this conference? To this conference? Yeah. To know the people you don't know, and I'm not talking about Lisa because Lisa's written books, she has classes and stuff like that. Yeah. And Lisa also, great person to meet. But you want to meet the person who's not Lisa. Because I met Lisa when she was a person with a flip camera saying, hi, could you tell me about what this means to you? Yeah. And I thought, who the heck is that? And it was the person that no one knew. Yeah. Right? And now look at her. Yeah. She fed off us. We fed off her. It turned out to be a pretty good trip together. Yeah. I've met four people today that I didn't know. It's, it, were, dude, were it's be 10 here. o'clock in the morning. You already met four people? Well, I'm, I w I'm not making that up. That's crazy. I meet more people when I'm not... Um, okay. Yeah. Drinking in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to do this again <laughs> in three years. No, I just... I, I'm not a morning person, so I don't... Well, neither am I. I'm not inclined to, to be like, hey! So thanks for that little opportunity. I'm, I'm the world's least morning person. If we just took the four hours from when morning starts and noontime, yeah. I'd be happy. Just throw them away. Yeah. Start at noon and let's see how their day builds. But here, I drag myself out of bed and drag myself down to Lean Coffee. To see what can happen. Because Lean, Lean Coffee, Lean okay. Coffee has people who say things that I think, I, yeah. I, I'm more awake now, tell me more. Um, someone today said, turns out there are a whole lot of books that I've never read. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you picked that up while you were here. <laughs> well, I wrote it down because, you know, morning. <laughs> Morning. So that's what you want to do. You want to meet people you didn't know you wanted to meet. Yeah. And they actually probably enjoy, me enjoy meeting you. Yeah. Now, you also can go to Linda Rising session and get an entire lifetime worth of that distilled and presented, and that's totally cool. A bunch of people did that this morning. Yeah. But I've liked the, <laughs> the unscheduled meetings that we have. Yeah. I've liked the Audacious Salon yeah. where I see people that I have no idea who they are, and at the end of the hour and a half, I, I have more people that I want to yeah. have drinks with. Um, but not in the morning. But not in the morning. <laughs> Although I'm open to that. So that's why they have met with Bloody Mary's. Day drinking at the conference. Yes, and, uh, to my new employer. No, I really <laughs> don't drink all day. I swear. Just in the morning. Uh, um, <laughs> 
There's lots that's of that's what you want to do. There's lots of amazing opportunities. You want to so find many, what you don't know you were looking for. Yeah, there's so many I guess I it's such an abundance of opportunities everywhere you turn around to learn something new from some different source. Twenty two hundred fascinating people, sixty yeah. percent who've of whom had never been here before. And all the new stuff they try every year, like the business agility thing oh, and, yeah. the, and the therapist therapy lounge. So the therapy lounge, yes. Yeah. For those of you who need agile. For those therapy. of you who want unlicensed therapy, it's the place to go. <laughs> Come on, Chris is doing a good job down there. But all right, so dude, Lisa's coming. You gotta go away. Thank you for coming. It was great talking to you again. Thanks. We're going to have just as messed up an interview next year. So please keep watching. We're going to be streaming all day long with people that are here at the conference. Thanks.